So today, I'm going to tell you about how I got admitted into nursing school. So if you're interested, let's get right into it. Hello guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Alasi. I'm a resident nurse here in Ghana. A few days ago, I made a post about what story you guys would want to hear from me, whether my admission story, that time I dealt with death the first time on the ward and also that time I almost killed somebody and I wanted to tell the story that wins the pool or take it one like the one that wins the second and then the last but I was advised but by my mentor that the story that won which is that time I almost killed somebody will not carry the message I wanted to carry now because most of you, my viewers, are now in, uh, are now going to school. You don't understand some things yet. So even if I tell the story, it will just be for the fun of it, but not carry the message I wanted to carry and make the impact I wanted to make. So I'll still tell that story someday, but it's on the shelf for now. So one commenter also said that I should rather take the stories just as I arrange them in the pool. So my admission story first, the first time I dealt with death, and then um, and then the one that won. So I'm going to do just that. I'm sorry to disappoint, but I think it's for the best. And when I do tell that story, and you are in school or you are on your clinicals, you will understand where I'm coming from, and it will make, make and it will make better sense to you than now because now you just listen to it for the fun of it and that is not what i'm aiming at growing up i've always wanted to be a nurse i've always wanted to be a nurse because of two occasions one i was very sick i had this skin condition i think i've always suffered skin conditions i don't know what is wrong with my skin i had this skin disease that gave me so all over my body from my face like any part of my body that there was skin i had so on it I was hospitalized for a long period of time and whilst I was hospitalized there's this nurse that took very good care of me she was so nice she was so kind the other nurses were good but this one kind of had a personal relationship with me she would close from work and sometimes just come around to make sure I was okay and all of that so it's like it touched me I was I was just moved and decided I can do what she's she's doing because I'm a very compassionate person so it's easy for me to like feel for somebody else in a bad condition so when uh, while growing up my the second occasion that happened my my auntie was a, is a midwife she's a retired midwife now but when she was doing her clinicals because she went to school she went to meet with me as a mature student so when she was doing her clinicals we were living in Jurassic kind by then so she came to do her clinicals at the Jessica government hospital so my mom decided to prepare some food for her so we went to visit her to deliver the food and also like socialize with her a little and as a curious child i just started working on the hospital lane first of all i just loved the environment you know when you go to hospitals that are kind of on the outskirts of the town you see that the place is so quiet and serene and so peaceful and calm and that was what i experienced that day and so i was just walking on the lanes peeping through windows you know curious child things peeping through windows and and also i got to one door that had this it has a, 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 a door but it had glasses in it in the door and growing up i was i was a tall child so i could reach the glass area and i peeped through Apparently that was a theater, so they were conducting a surgery. It was a general surgery, and they had people in white gown, uh, in like overall and all the cape and things, and they had like human parts on a platter. I think it was a general surgery, so part of the intestine. So I think they were looking for where the cause of the disease was. <clears throat> like I just saw people like they were doing surgery in that room, and I stood there for a long while. I was just amazed. I was, my mind was blown because, like, I just felt like they were doing some something amazing, like they were the mechanics of the human body. Yeah. 
So from there on, I was like, ah, if this is things that, this is some of the things that go on in the hospital, then I have to be in the hospital or I have to be a nurse. So fast forward, after uh, SHS, I didn't really do well because I don't like studying. So I had to receive from my not back. Then I got that because I know what is at stake. I got that. And so in 2010, I applied for two schools, whole nursing training and university HNCC. It was CHNTTS by then, Community Health Nursing Training School. But now it's Community Health Nursing Training College. So I applied, so for O, I applied for general nursing, and then for Winneba, I applied for resident community nursing. I had no coaching at all on interview, or I didn't even know uh, YouTube existed by then, that videos of interviews and all of those things were on YouTube that I could have access to. I didn't know, I discovered YouTube in 2016. So, so my interview at home was horrible. Like, oh my God, I... I cried like I just see it. the day before going to go interview and by this time after my nursing after my nursing school I was I was doing some small boja boja work at ECG because my dad is a foreman so I was doing some cashiering work at ECG so we did we were going around collecting um, bills we were going around collecting bills from the small small villages around so I didn't really have time to get prepared like fully well so i sent my cloth for sewing the seamstress delayed so the day before i would go for the interview at school was the day i went for my dress to wear and it was badly sewn and i felt like i didn't have anything in my closet or bag that would uh, fit the occasion so i needed something new to wear like that's how i felt so i got the dress and it was badly made like the 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 neckline was down to this level like i'm kind of busty so when i put on my bra and wore the dress you see cleavage like my boobs are here here and then so i i went the next day i went for the interview at school so finally it got to my turn. I got there around 7. I entered the interview room around 11. I got in. By this time I was nervous because I've never been in such a situation. Like some big, big, big manga Gia women. Tough with some, you know, those manga Gia makeups. And this is 2010, so it's not that good of a makeup as well say on show paint blue nam hana yellow nam ha that kind of so immediately i entered and i saw this three huge women seated at the high table with one guy there was one man here who took my documents i sat down and when they offered me a chair and when they offered me a chair i was i was like sitting on the edge of the of the chair like this and 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 then one of the women was like, ah, sit well, are you okay? I'm like, yes, I'm okay. <laughs> oh, my. oh my goodness. I was like, yes, I'm okay. And then they asked me to talk about myself. Ah, I couldn't. Like, it's me now. They're asking you to talk about you yourself. And I couldn't. I didn't know what to say. I, I stated my name, my age, where I'm coming from, the program I did in, S uh, in SHS. They were still asking for more. I didn't know what to say. Okay, I pushed. I don't. I didn't even talk about my hobbies and all that. So then, one of the women was like, "Ah, and this is who, and I'm an airway. So who and my hometown is. We are neighbors, and we have this mountain there. So I don't know what uh, tickled the man who was." writing who was holding i don't know what tickled them who was holding my documents so like ah you are from adapu mountains here you can't uh, talk ah and they, there was this joke that they make like there was this thing that they used to make fun of my people said one of our mps went to the parliament and was talking about our mountains saying that they have we have mountains sir and monkeys sir like everything he would say he would add sir to it like elephants sir mount <laughs> Elephants set, monkeys set, mountains set. And then this guy decided to tease me with it. And then the confidence level that was here now just dropped. Pa, 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 pa. 
my mind was empty, like everything I knew just vanished. So one woman was like, hey, you are coming to an interview. Look at the dress you are wearing. Huh? Did anybody tell you? And nobody told me that the dress I wore was not nice. Nobody told you, look at the dress you are wearing. Or you want to come and show us your person. <laughs> Look at the dress you are wearing. Or oh, you want to come and show us your breast here? Yes. I want to go home. I just want to go home. Oh my God. And then one woman was like, it's like they were just bombarding me. And at this point, I think they, they realized that I couldn't talk. I couldn't talk. So one woman was like, oh, so you did geography in school. What is the capital uh, city of central region? I'm like, it's Kumasi. And they were all like, hey, are you sure? Even the hey, are you sure should have prompted me that I've... Mm -mm, I didn't realize. Because at that point, I just want to go home. So I was like, yes, the central... Uh, the central uh, I was like, yes, this, the, the capital city of central region is Kumasi. And... They were just like, okay, they asked some few more questions. They didn't even ask why I wanted to be a nurse. They asked some few more questions and then they let me go. So I just, when I came out of the room, I just put my file inside my, under my armpits and I called my dad. I said, dad, who? And he did not pick me. He said, ah, but you just finished the interview. You are not even in the house. Yes, I said, ah, dad, they didn't pick me. Oh. They didn't pick me. Truly, truly, too, they didn't pick me. And then the next day, I went for teacher training interview because I bought two forms for nursing training and then one form for teacher training. The teacher training was my dad's idea. Like, he just wanted us to cover all grounds in case nursing doesn't pick me, teaching will pick me. So the next day, I went for the teaching interview. And one thing about me is I'm not very sociable. I'm not, the, I'm an introvert. I don't really interact a lot. If I'm among people, if I'm among a lot of people, if you don't approach me, it's hard for me to approach you and just start talking unless there's something very important I have to ask you. So I think that is one of the things that contributed to the whole interview horrible incident because when we got there, people, the environment was just quiet and those people at the back were talking to each other. Hey, so do you know this? Do you know that? But those of us in front, we didn't really talk. And if you don't talk to me, I will not talk. I won't say anything. So when we got to the teaching training interview, I just, I decided, okay, I also engaged more. And I also met a few of my SHS colleagues there. So it was more relaxing than the whole interview. So we got interactive. Oh, what program did you choose? This, this, and that. And then people were talking and all of that. But I was not really interested in teaching. But that interview offered me some insight into how to handle the interview situation. I went for the teacher training interview at Hohoe. And for the teacher training, we wrote exams and uh, we filled some forms and all of that. I took the form to the house. I didn't submit the form because one of my colleagues told me, one of my schoolmates told me that the teacher training, they will call before nursing training. And the teacher, tra and the teacher training colleagues, they will admit before nursing training. So like the likelihood of them calling me and my dad probably, because he doesn't know whether nursing will pick me, would not probably pay the fees. So I didn't want that to happen. So I brought the forms home. So my brother called to check why they didn't give me admission. They said they couldn't find my form. I'm like, what? They didn't see my form. But I went. So the following, two weeks after the whole interview, so two weeks after the whole interview, I went for the Winnie Bar interview. So for the Winnie Bar interview, because I was living in the Bota region by then, and, and I had to travel all the way to Winnie Bar, I had to go a day before. So we went a day before, and we're giving accommodation and bed everything and we're paired in the room so the lady the girl i shared the room with that night taught me a lot of things like she had proper coaching she came from a family of nurses and doctors so she had proper coaching talk talk we talked about we talked about a lot of things how to sit how to compose yourself how to uh, some of the things they will answer and uh, some of the things they will ask and how to answer questions that how to like tell them the interviewers the questions you can't answer and just be relaxed and have fun with it and then the next morning when we went into the to do the interview we were like interacting because like she has now become my friend when she is going around 
asking people questions. I would be listening and following her, and then we were engaging with it, with each other and all of that. And some people were giving pressure. Huh? Hey, do you know this? Do you know that? When you go for an interview and people are doing that, just like because sometimes the things you already know, they will make you feel like you don't know enough, and then you start panicking. Don't don't do that. When people do that, at least pick the ones you think are relevant and just leave that environment because people can give pressure, pressure and kasa. So we went. It got to my turn. Now I have information and some experiences, so I was ready for this interview. So I walked in, and this time, like normal, regular women were seated on the on the panel. And then one of our tutors, actually, they used our tutors to do the interview for Winnie So one of our tutors, when I got there, I was smiling and bubbly. I wore a dress, one of my church dresses that was nice and comfortable. And without exposing my cleavage, I was comfortably dressed, low shoe and all of that. And then I sat, greeted them, they gave me a seat, I sat, I was all smiles. And then, and one of our tutors said, yeah, oh God bless her. She was like, wow, I like your smile, you look beautiful. I'm like, oh, thank you. And then my spirit was like calm, it's like, you got this, like, mm. So they asked me questions, everything, all of the things they asked me at home that I couldn't answer, they asked the same questions here. I answered, they asked about my hobbies, I told them, and even committed myself that I like reciting poetry. Hey, I'm wishing shit. <laughs> so they said I should recite a poem, and I gave them two lines, and every poem I knew from primary school. Then by the time like by the time I was leaving the interview room in Winnipeg, the panelists were laughing and all of that. So I knew my interview went well. So Singa was like, Oh, that's it for today. We will hear from us, okay? I said, Okay, ma, thank you, ma. So I left. And the way that interview went, I knew that they were going to pick me because my grades were good. I was well compared. Uh, well, they are here. Me and Vinny said they are here. I did well, like I knew I did well because I have the whole experience to compare it with. So I left, I came home, and then I continued my ECG cashiering works more, 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 more. And then one day we were just, I think we were on the field. We were on the field, yes. That day, normally we'll go out on, normally we'll go out, normally we'll go out on Tuesdays. Tuesdays are disconnection days, so when you are owing bills, we'll come around. And so when the disconnector is moving around, the cashier is also moving with him so that when we get to your house to disconnect your meter and you have money to pay, I'll take the money and leave you receipt and then we leave you. We don't have money to pay, we'll disconnect you. So I think we were on the field that Tuesday when I got a call from the office because I used the ECG office address on my letter, on my envelope. So they, they called that I've received a letter from University of Oh my God like everybody around me knew that this girl has received good news like i just couldn't explain i was so ecstatic i was so happy i was so so happy and i couldn't wait to get home i came took the letter tore it open it and i was shouting in the office like crazy and then we started buying because back then the uh, admission letter would come with your admission fee and then you go and pay so um so we i went to buy all of my things prepared and then on the 26 and then on the 26th of october 2010 i went to school now in preparing to go to school like i went to i wanted to be a fine girl small you know so i went to play this corn road nice corn road that you like they held i was looking fine and we didn't go because the road, the, the distance is far and we had to go by road. By the time we got there, it was late, very, very late. So all the rooms were finished. So we were given this room where there was no bed, like it was a storeroom. It was a storeroom. There was no bed and there was nothing. So it's just, we had to put our mattresses on the floor and, um, and put our chobosses in the same room. So it was all of all of us were all first years. There were four of us. There were four of us. Yes. I, Doro, Emily, and uh oh, my other friend. So there were four of us. We were all first years. We were put in this room. And that's where some of the fun things happened. But not knowing the school didn't allow for 
extension or weaves. You can't. Uh, we we didn't plate our hair with extensions in nursing school. So you have even if you do curl roll or rasta or anything, it has to be your own hair. You can't add any ribbon or anything into your hair. So we got there. I got settled in. The matron called me. I was like, we don't allow this in this school. So you have to undo it today. Like ah, <laughs> this is my fine hair. Want me to undo it today? Today. She was like, yes, you can't take this to class. And it was a Sunday, so Monday we'll be going to class. I said, yes, you can't take this to class, so you have to undo it. And I was so furious. But when I got inside, I realized that one of my colleagues who was sharing the room with me, who then became my friend, is was also having a, a weevil, like the side parted weevil, where you will not see that it's a weevil. She was like, ah, let me undo yours for you, and you undo mine for me. So I undid her hair. She also removed my braids and... We started school on Monday. And that started a journey to a career that I really love. I started working and I realized that uh, I'm glad who didn't pick me because when we were training, going for clinicals, and then after training, I went for my rotation, I realized I didn't really like working in the hospital. It would be a story for another time why I don't like being in the hospital. I just didn't like the routine and all of that. So I like some aspects of the hospital, but not all. And in Ghana, you can't choose where you want to work. They will decide be here or be here. And because I was a registered general nurse, maybe because I was an RC and that's why I saw it that day. But I didn't really, but I didn't really enjoy working at the best side as much as I did working in the public health units. So I figured. Everything that happened, happened for the right reasons. Because if Ho had picked me, I would have become a registered general nurse and I'll be in the ward and hate it. Because I know I didn't really like working on the ward, especially medical ward. And I didn't like the shift system. I didn't like the routine. Like every day you go, it's different, different patients, but the work is the same. It's administering of drugs, it's checking vital signs, it's bed bath, it's, it's like the same thing over and over again and I get bored easily with doing the same thing over and over again so that's why so I'm glad who didn't pick me and we never picked me other than that otherwise I wouldn't be where I am today and I'm loving where I am today so moral of the story it's okay when things don't go the way you expect it's okay if you doing you don't get what you are hoping to get and just let life have its way let life have its way because you didn't know where to take you. Sometimes we fight so much and get so disappointed when things don't go our way. But because I remember after that whole interview, I was very worried and like scared because if Ho doesn't pick me and Winnie doesn't pick me, then I have to wait for another year to go to school. So I was sad, I wept and all of that. But Winnie picked me and because of that, I am where I am today. So. Don't be too hard on yourself and try to enjoy. And these are the things that will give you stories in life. So, so that's my admission story. So I'll see you in my next one. Bye.